Alright, <clears throat> hello everyone and welcome back to more Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Since last time, I, we, you know, only did unfortunately one duel. Ah, oh, jeez. I really, I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. And you know, it really feels like I'm kind of bitching and moaning a lot in these videos. That's not my intention. I actually really, really do like this game. Since I feel like it is just, you know, a nice casual experience for people who are looking for that. And, um, but my main, main issue with this game is that, well, I just hate how underpowered some of the story decks feel. And I will just keep hammering that point home. I really, really don't like it, but... Honestly, overall, I do think that this is a fine enough game. Now, I'm actually going to go into Deck Editor for at the start of this episode. And as you can see right here, I started making a Magnet Warrior deck. It's incomplete right now, but I'm actually going to be testing how it flows in between episodes. And um, I also don't have all of the cards here, but overall I'm planning on 19 monsters. I think that that's a good, fair amount. Um, I only have one be Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, because I feel like only one is necessary. Then I'm going to have um, two Berserkion, two Valkyrian, mainly because of Delta. And uh, honestly, this is going to be an interesting, interesting deck when it's completed. But yeah, that. But anyway, yeah, that's basically the deck as it is right now. And yeah, I'm also just running one pot of greed and one graceful charity. I might remove the foolish burial, depending. But we shall see. Anyway, overall, this is the deck so far. I'm gonna be doing like a, some deck profiles after I. And, you know, just showing off the decks that I'm going to be using in uh, dual challenges. But anyway, yeah. Enough, enough dawdling. Let's get started. It is now time for the Battle City Tournament Finals. As I mentioned, as I um, mentioned last time, the it's unfortunate that a lot of story duels were just really skipped. And yeah, I, I just don't care for that. It's it's just feels kind of weird and random in my opinion to do that, but yeah, what can you really do? So the first group four duelist, the fifth finalist, soon arrived. It was Merrick using the fake name Namu. He befriended it Joey and Taya during the tournament. His plan was falling into place. Yugi, meet our friend Namu. I've heard about you, Yugi. It's an honor to meet you. Any friend of Joey and Taya is a friend of mine. I'm so happy to be surrounded by such a welcoming crowd. I also like to bullshit a lot. <laughs> and it's Bakura. What's he doing here? And why are you wearing a dual disc? Why else? I won six locator cards and entered the finals. Rewind a sec. When did you enter the tournament? Join. How'd you make it all the way to the finals? The seventh turn turn. Yeah, the seventh finalist arrived just in time for Bakura to change the topic. Look, it's the seventh finalist. Hey, this, hey, this guy looks familiar, and that's a mug you don't forget. State your name. My name is Merrick. I, I don't know. Your name says Odeon. I, I, hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Merrick's henchman, Odeon, assumed Merrick's name and hid Merrick's true identity. It was all part of Merrick's plan. I'll kick your brainwashing keista. You're no match for me, fool. The only reason I'm not toss... <clears throat> the only reason I'm not tossing you out by your cape right now is, is so I can save my energy to take you down in the finals. Got that, pal? I think I scared him, Yug. Now that is seven of the eight finalists arrived. And now that now that seven out of eight finalists arrived. Kaiba announced that 
even though their locator cards showed them this location, it wasn't the site of the Battle City Finals. At that moment, Kaiba's blimp arrived. Once they were aboard, it was time for the first duel between Yugi and Bakura. Yugi knew that there was something not right with Bakura. I know that's not Bakura. It's the evil spirit of the Millennium Ring, and I bet he's still after the seven Millennium Items. This duel is going to be tougher than everyone thinks. I must win this. The fate of the world depends on it. Are you prepared to lose it all? What's all the fuss? What's that? What's around Bakura's man neck? Namu, it's hard to explain, but that's not really Bakura. You see, uh, Yugi and Bakura have these really old objects that have magical powers. Yugi's item is good, and Bakura's is bad. Because an evil spirit lives inside of it. So you're telling me that there's an evil spirit up there dueling Yugi? That's hard to believe. Of course... Of course, he's bullshitting. <laughs> now that introductions are done and over with, why don't we begin this duel? Okay, so... This... So, there are s other special win conditions other than, you know, milling your opponent's deck out and making it so that they can no longer draw a card. As well as Exodia. The other win condition is going to be explored in, you know, here. In fact, I think I talked about it briefly in another part, or in a past part, but I'm still going to keep it amb ambiguous for now. Alright, I'm going to use Magic Cylinder here. I think it's kind of worth it, but, you know. I am honestly hoping that I can show it off. But, hey, we shall just see, right? Okay... I think I'm going to summon it over here. Also, the, as you can see, the background changed. I didn't mention this, but I really do like how the background changes in some duels. I don't know, it's just an aesthetic that I like. So before it, in Duelist Kingdom, we had a sort of grassy background here. And um, during Battle City, we had a more city background. And now it's more of like a skyscraper or, you know, the feeling of you flying in a blimp. Personally, I would not be able to handle this with my fear of heights. And, um, if we were going by regular anime rules of 4,000 life points, that would be an OTK. Well, not an OTK, but, you know. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm going to activate Monster Reborn here. Uh, special summon, uh, the ghost... Let's see, the gross ghost of fled dreams kind of a mouthful uh ah uh, geez I think Bakura might have actually yeah oh yeah this was um this was a lot easier than I expected I quickly won that duel um Bakura you okay you bricked hard, didn't you? Huh? Where am I? You're with your friends now, Bakura. I'm glad Bakura's okay. The Millennium Ring is a lot like my puzzle. It holds an ancient spirit that l that depends on someone else so it can exist. And even though there's and even though the spirit it of the ring is evil and Petru and controls Bakura against its will, it's his will. It seems it still needs Bakura in order to survive. There's one major difference between Bakura and I. What's that? The spirit inside my item is my friend. You and I... And you and I are always going to be there to support each other no matter what comes our way. You were there to help me with my gran when my grandpa was in trouble, and now I'm here to help you rescue the world from evil. I promise that together we'll figure out the secrets of your ancient past and how to unlock your hidden powers before Merrick can take them because your destiny is mine too and we're going to win that's right 
That was a tough duel, but thanks to our teamwork and the heart of the cards, we came out on top. Now we're headed for round two, and we're going to take it all the way. Yep, yeah, and that was the last duel with Bakura. So, yeah. That's unfortunate. Um... Okay, so now we are going to do the reverse duel. And uh, hopefully I can show off that alternate win condition that I was talking about. Or at, le or at the very least get the cards to show off that alternate win condition. Now, yeah, as you can see, like, um, the card, the card name was, um, Destiny Board, I believe. You'll see, I, I'm gonna try and show it off to the best of my abilities, but it all depends on if, you know, the deck decides to give me those cards. Ah, here we go. So, this right here is, um, is the Spirit Message A, and, you know, I drew it and it can only be placed with the effect of Destiny Board. So, basically what Destiny Board is, is that it is, what Destiny Board is, is that it is an alternate win condition of the game. Basically what you want to do is, um, what you want to try and do with the, a Destiny Board deck, hey Dark Magician Girl, um, what you want to try and do with a Destiny board deck is that you want to is that you want your sp the main trap card is known as ah there it is yeah see the main trap card is known as Destiny board when this when this and all four spirit messages are on the field the the ones that spell the word for you know um the Destiny board I the Destiny board um n the destiny board a and the destiny board l when all those are on the field and they will spell out the world word final and if you have all four um five of those on the field you win the game i am going to be attempting to win the game with the with you know the destiny board condition there's no guarantee i'll be able to though it is something that I will be trying, though. And then place I on the field. Now my question is this, can I place A on the field? No, I cannot. All right, so I'm going to use Nightmare Steel Cage here and try and build out my board. I'm not Oh, and that Oh, and um here's a unique little quirk. Um unf So In order to place the Destiny board the um letters on my field I need to have a clear board, meaning that I, meaning that if Nightmare Steel Cage is on the field, field, I can't, like still on the field, I can't place the final letter. So yeah, I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna try not to use spells and trap cards if I can help it. There's still no gear, like. Ugh. Thankfully, with the thankfully, there's a field spell that is that provides a lot of Destiny board support. Um, but you know, I don't think it exists right now. Uh, let's see. What I'm going, um, I'm not going to use change of change of heart, even though I could. Instead, I'm just going... I feel like I have enough so that I can take it. Yeah. Yeah, I can take it. And the moment he ends the he ends his turn, I win the game. There's the Dark Magician. 
Fuck it. There we go. Yep. Yeah, so that's the goal of a destiny of the destiny board. And um I find them to be interesting. Like the decks are interesting. In fact, one of my friends was actually planning on making a destiny board deck, and he very well can now. Um anyway, yeah. Here's the second duel right here. And let's get it started. While everyone waited for the next duel to begin, Yugi waited in his uh, returned to his room to uh, returned to his room to rest and was suddenly surprised by a man in robes who wore a turban. His name was Sadi. Sadi? And he explained how he had come to provide Yugi guidance for the challenges that came ahead. I am the guardian of the seven millennium items. I am here because I sense the disturbance in the mystic alignment once again. All seven items are aboard this vessel. Are all seven items are aboard this vessel as well as the three Egyptian god cards, which means all of the objects capable of saving and destroying the world are in, right here. Really? The Earth safety rides with you, Yugi. Heed my words. If the individuals were to gain control of any of one of any of the Millennium items or one of the Egyptian God cards, the results could be catastrophic. It nearly happened once before Pegasus created dual monsters. It did, but when? It all began when Maximilian Pegasus first arrived in Egypt. He was searching for a method of un of reuniting with his lost love. His quest brought him to me, and I presented him with the Millennium Eye, for he was destined to possess it. Soon after, he discovered the origins of the ancient Egyptian shadow games. Pegasus became obsessed with these games and decided to dedicate his life to cre recreating them. During one of his early research trips, to the ancient pyramids, Pegasus planned to locate the stone that's depicting the ancient god monsters he'd read about. So I guided Pegasus and his team of archaeological. Uh, archaeologu I can't fucking say that word for some reason. I keep on trying, but I can't. To an ancient underground chamber hidden beneath the desert sands. And after traveling by foot for hours, their journey was over. Pegasus entered a dimly lit chamber. As promised, I brought him to the ancient resting place of the Egyptian god Tablets. Pegasus found what he came for, knowing he, never knowing he was about to release a devastating force like no other. Triumphant, Pegasus returned to America and to design his cards based on the images he found on the on the stones. He was destined to awaken the ancient, the Egyptian god monsters, but he was not destined to control their powerful magic. Although Pegasus completed the prototypes for the three Egyptian god cards, he immediately flew to Egypt to seal them in the tomb alongside the original carvings to spare the world their absolute power. With the help of Ishizu, Pegasus sealed away the cards. And then Megasus, and then Merrick tried to steal them. Yes, and he, and if he were to get his hands on all three, the results would be devastating. I can assure you, Merrick will never get hold of the three Egyptian god cards. My Pharaoh. Oh, geez, he's blushing. I, I, I I'm not sure if um Yugi, I'm not sure if Yugi swings that way, and um. I'm pretty sure he's underage, so I'm I, I'm gonna have to, you know, um, call the FBI on your ass. So just 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 get just, just leave. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, l leave, dude. Like like l leave. <laughs> you're 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 kind of sus. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Ugh. I, I'm not sure if I should cut that out or not. Oh, jeez, I'm gonna get so cancelled. If that ever gets out. Oh my god. Ah, screw it. Whatever. <laughs> the... 
the second duel between Merrick and Joey. Since Odeon was pretending to be Merrick, Odeon stood before Joey, ready to duel. Let's do this, Merrick. It's time to duel and to destroy you. Prepare for defeat. Don't count on Me Merrick. I'm not scared of you. Okay. Oh my god. Why do you still have this in your deck, Joey? Um, I believe at one point this card was banned. Um, I can't remember correctly though, but that's just from my, but that's just from my knowledge. So I'm going to activate Foolish Burial. And let's see. And I'm going to send... You know what? I think I'm going to send Insect Queen just because of how useless that card is. Let's see. And I'm going to summon Little Wingard. Then I'm going to activate Shield and Sword. And you can activate that. Okay, that's fine. Um... How about I just attack your face down? Fair enough. Um... So, I'm actually going to, like, um, explain what that is at the end of this episode. So, let's see. Hmm. Garuzis kind of won't help me. I think I'm just gonna send sword. I think I'm just gonna set Swordsman of Landsar. But yeah, as you can... No. But yeah, as you can see, like, he does have, um... He does have the Winged Dragon of Ra in his deck, which is another Egyptian god, much like Slifer the Sky Dragon. And, um, I, I, geez, I don't think I really went over it in, like, you know, the last episode, but basically, Egypt, but basically, um, Divine Beast, but as you can see right here, it has a special attribute, unlike the normal six, called Divine. And there are only three cards in the game currently that have that you know, that have that element or attribute, and that is the Winged Dragon of Raw, Slifer the Sky Dragon, and Obelisk the Tormentor. Obelisk we will see later on, and Divine, and they also have a unique typing known as Divine Beast. And all three of the Egyptian God cards require three tributes. In order to be summoned and they can be special summoned but if they were special summoned they can't well the winged dragon of raw here can't but with slifer the sky dragon and i believe obelisk the tormentor if they are special summoned then basic then basically they just go to the graveyard and there's nothing you can do so Let's see. So, I'm going to attack this uh, trap monster right here. It's going to be reduced, then I'm going to attack. And then during my end phase, little wind guard is going to be changed to defense mode. Um, but about the Egyptian god cards, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Canon, they are considered to be the most powerful uh, monsters in all of dueling. 
But I'm gonna be completely honest with you, the actual in the actual card game, they're kind of garbage. At least I think that they are. Um, I'm personally not the biggest fan of them, and apparently I have to and apparently I have to activate this like now. Which I well. Oh well. I was hoping to save that, but there's really nothing you can do about that. Okay, tributed. Oh no. Okay, um. Yeah, I'm going to activate Fairy Box. Yeah, um. I'm gonna guess heads. Thanks, game. Tails. Thanks, game. Basically, um, Odeon's deck uses trap monsters. No. Ugh. I think I'm actually just gonna restart this duel. I'm I'm bricking badly. But yeah, but but yeah, basically like um, that's that's just um you know. That's just everything you need to know about Divine Beasts. I should have probably went over it, but I didn't... But I guess my brain just told me that, yeah, they're, they're not really that important. Even though they kind of are. <laughs> uh, Golden Sarcophagus, Graceful Charity. Now, in the anime, he Odeon actually used Golden Sarcophagus on the Winged Dragon of Ra. All right, gonna go Alligator Sword. Then I'm going to summon it in the extra monster zone. Now I'm going to summon Little Wind Guard. Then I'm going to attack his face down. Judgment of Anubis. Ugh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, um, I was hoping to check and see what it did, but I can't, unfortunately. Um, I do remember it being a nasty card, though. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna activate Scapegoat. Um, Scapegoat is a quick play spell. It, what it does is that it makes it so that, um, what it does is it special summons four sheep tokens, but as you can see right here, they can't be tribute summoned, or they can't be used as a material for a tribute summon. Also, also like, um, when I activate this card, I can't summon any monsters. So, yeah. Um, it's actually a really, really useful card, believe it or not. Um, because, let's see, are, wait, or is it that I can't special summon monsters? Or, here, I'm just gonna reread the card. Uh, let's see. Okay, you cannot summon any other monster. So, basically, what you would. Basically, what most people would do is that they would set this, and then at the end of their opponent's turn, they would uh, flip it up. They would flip it up, and then they'd have four sheep tokens. Now, keep in mind, it says that you can't uh, summon any monsters after you, you activate this effect. Technically, if you activate it during your opponent's end phase, then it's not considered. Then you know the effect is null and void on your turn. You know, just a little trick. I also realized that it's this late in and I didn't explain what the phases are. I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, 
Ugh. Yeah, ugh. Yeah, I'm just really, really sorry about that. Okay, so. No. No, I'm good. I'm going to use what a little Wingar to attack. Um, Tiki Soul? Nope. I'm good. I'm gonna use Kunai with Chain. And I'm going to equip it to a little Wingard. And then I'm going to replay the attack and destroy Tiki Soul. Um, yeah, that's something... Um, that's something that is, um... Bruh, that is something I should mention, like, um... Basically, the game, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a mechanic where, um, let's say it's your battle phase and your monster declares a direct attack. Well, if your opponent summons a monster, you can choose to either stop the attack or continue it since the amount of monsters on your opponent's side of the field has changed. So, that's something that you should be aware of, like, if for any reason, like, your mon the monsters on your opponent's side of the field have changed, then you can just stop your attack or continue it anyway. Activate little Wingard's effect. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah, that's game. Odeon is actually pretty easy for the most part. Odeon's... D so, yeah, you shouldn't have too much trouble. You should be able to beat it on, like, you know, the next try. Like, um, I ended up losing there because I absolutely just kept on bricking and had nothing to play. And unfortunately, that is a main theme with Joey's deck. You are going to brick a lot, as I mentioned before. But yeah. Anyway, let's let's continue on. Odeon's deck contained in a copy uh, contained an Egyptian god card. Contained a copy of an Egyptian god card. So um the winged dragon of Ra in Odeon's deck was actually fake. It was not the actual card itself. And as such, the and as such, according to what the Yu-Gi-Oh! lore contains, the gods are as I mentioned there, it struck Odeon down with lightning. In fact, um the story between Odeon and Merrick is quite tragic. Um Merrick considered Odeon his only friend and for the longest time and Basically, um, Merrick was forced to take part in the destiny he wanted no part in, and he saw like how everyone was basically just abusing him, giving these unrealistic expectations on him, and it created a darkness inside of him. And Odeon here was the only one who protected him, and the only one who he considered to be a true friend. And Odeon frequently got punished for Merrick and you know that only further awakened the darkness inside of him so yeah so seeing like Me um, Odeon get struck down his only friend yeah so like um this pretty much just um makes the darkness inside of Merrick just snap Odeon dedicated his life to protecting Merrick by containing the evil within Merrick but with Odeon weakened, his control over the dark evil was losing its control. Or, or was losing. But sorry. Forgive me, Joey. I'm sorry. It was an honor to duel. It was an honor for me to duel you. Well, same to you. And thanks to that lightning bolt, I won't forget this duel for a while. But it's done. You gotta come clean. If you're not Merrick, who are you? I'm a servant of the real Master Merrick. Admit your true identity, Merrick. Yes, it's me. I am indeed the true Merrick, you fools. So Namu lied to us all along? Namu, he was a disguise to get me closer to Yugi, so Pharaoh, we finally meet face to face. Now at least I need to finish 
the job my pathetic servants couldn't. Yugi, your puzzle and power will soon bo will <clears throat> soon come where they belong, or whatever. Meh. Sorry, I'm a terrible reader, as I mentioned. Oh no, I was afraid of this. We're all in great danger. The great evil within Master Merrick has a darker side, and I'm unable to contain it anymore. It's too late now. Ah! And there we go. Here's the main villain now. In all his glory. And, um... Gotta be honest with everyone. Merrick is possibly one of my favorite villains in the series. I don't know, it just, he has this intimidating aura around him, and it, it, it's just, like, really entertaining to, s I, I really just like his look and whatnot, and just how goddamn much of a bastard he is. I, I really, really like Merrick. <laughs> I'm finally free again, which means I can do things my way. I was restrained for many years by that fool Odeon. Who are you? I am the true Merrick, and I'm not as kind as the one you've come to know. And soon I'll f finish the job he couldn't complete and strip you of your powers. <laughs> uh. Oh. Huh. We got a Monarch card. Nice. So. Yeah. So before we end, so before we end the episode here, let's talk about one of my favorite things: duels that they missed between the Odeon versus Joey duel. There was another duel, and that was Merrick versus My Valentine. It honestly would have been amazing if you could play as Merrick and just absolutely decimate Mai. Like, it's definitely, definitely a shame since I feel like that is such a key duel in the series to basically just show how much of an evil bastard Merrick is. And it's just so disappointing that they decided to not include that duel. <sighs> what can you do, though? What can you do? But anyway, we're going to... After this duel, we're going to end the episode here. And, um... Huh. I'm definitely going to have to go back... Realizing that I didn't properly explain the phases, I'm going to have to go back and, like, re-record that. Which is unfortunate, but what can you do? Okay, so magic arm shield. Let's see, judgment of Anubis. Let's see, discard, then if you do, then you can destroy one face of monster your opponent controls. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh, um, so what Golden Sarcophagus does is that it uh, allows you to target any card in your deck and banish it. And then after your second main phase, I believe, you can add that card to your hand. Really, really good card. Um... I think I'm going to banish March of the Monarchs. Um, what March of the Monarchs does is that uh, tribute summon monsters you control cannot be destroyed by tar are targeted by card effects, and but it makes it so that you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck. Oh no! What am I going to do? Wow, that's a real shame. It would be it would really suck to not be able to special summon monsters for my extra deck. He said sarcastically. Um I'm going to activate Tiki Soul and then I'm going to special summon this in defense mode. 
Now, now, as you can see right here, I special summon this as a monster, but it is still treated as a trap. So base, so basically, I can still. I'm just gonna set this to show, and then set this to show as well. But basically, um, and if I do get another spell and trap, like which will be very realistically next turn. Yep, right here. So I'm gonna get March of the Monarchs. I'm going to uh, play Tiki Soul, uh, play it in defense. Now, while they are monsters, they are... Wait, what? Wait, what? Oh! Oh, I can... But it says it's treated as a trap, so I shouldn't be able to... Huh. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Yeah, I do remember in older Yu-Gi-Oh games when um when you summoned a um spell um like a trap as a monster like these um trap monsters, then you could then they still counted towards the um five spell and trap card limit. I guess they updated that. Hmm. Anyway, um, I'm going to use Soul Exchange on Pan and I'm going to target Panther Warrior. And then I'm going to tribute these three monsters and summon the Winged Dragon of Raw. Let's see. Then I'm going to activate the Winged Dragon of Raw's effect. I barely... Now, this is a permanent effect, but what I did was, um... I made it so that my life points are only 100, and it gains... And, um, it makes it so that... At, um, whatever... Ah, sorry. Here, I'll just read it. When this card is a normal summon, you can pay life points so that until you have only 100 left, this card gains attack and defense equal to the amount of life points paid. So, yeah, it's a very high risk, high reward type of card. And, um, if nothing happens next turn, I win. Uh, yeah, I'll just play a Tiki Soul and summon in defense mode. Draw a card. Okay. Attack. Eh, that's fine. Th th this is fine. Tails was selected. Okay, well. <laughs> oh, you fool. Um... I'm gonna do Tiki Curse. And put it at, it goes to the top of my deck. Then I'm going to set these two cards face down. And I'm going to attack with Wing Dragon of Raw. I don't believe Joey has any burn cards in his deck. I don't believe so, at least. 
I'm going to I'm going to just summon my two um, trap monsters in defense mode. Oh, huh, weird, its effect didn't go off. Eh, whatever. Anyway, because the AI is an idiot, I am now going to attack. And there we go. So, that'll be it for this part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. In the next part, we, well, do the last duel of the Battle City Finals. Well, quarterfinals, I should say. See you guys then.